Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hi everybody. In PMC 500 Statistical Reasoning in Education, you'll be learning about statistics. So what are you going to learn this week is that you're going to learn about descriptive statistics which involves summarize the data and also display the data. So the objective for our lecture today is for you able to analyze and interpret data distribution which involves the process of constructing charts and graphs the bar chart, the histogram, the box plot, the stem and leaf plot using SPSS. And after that, you should be able to analyze and interpret the distribution, which involves the mean, mode, and median of the distribution using SPSS and interpret the distribution, which referring to the standard deviation and variance, the skewness of distribution using SPSS as well. So in this first part, summarizing and displaying data and also describing distribution, what I will explain to all of you is first how you can construct charts and graph and furthermore you can also be able to describe the distribution calculating mean, the modern median, standard deviation, variance, skewness of a distribution. So let us look at the first part yeah, on how you can construct the charts and graph using SPSS. Right. For example, you are doing a research to find out the achievements of uh, students, student achievements in mathematics. So you collect the data by using a test and you have the mathematics score, which you, you will key in all the scores in the SPSS. So this set of data makes sense when it is simplified. Yeah, we can report the number of students with specific scores in a table and this number is called frequency. So if you look at the sample that I show here or I presented here, when you look at the, the raw data, it is, um, it is not useful. Yeah? It's meaningless because you cannot able to explain the data or you cannot describe the data. So the importance of descriptive statistics is when you make sense of the data into something that can be reported using numbers. Right, so when you key in all the data into the SPSS, what you will see in the output of the SPSS is that it will show the frequency, the percent, the valid percent, as well as the cumulative percent. So most important things when you key in and to find the descriptive statistics is for you to look at the frequency part as well as the percent. So now you know total number of students who got 53 for their mathematics score is only 1 and the percent is 3.3%. And let's say the highest score would be 88 and the frequency or the number of students who get 88 is only 1 and the percentage is only 3.3%. So by transferring the raw data into something meaningful, it can make you report the finding by using numbers. So how you can key in or you can find out the descriptive statistic using SPSS. So of course, first things that you need to do is you need to key in into the SPSS data variable view. And then when you key in, you go to analyze, choose descriptive statistics and you choose frequency. Right, And of course, after you choose frequency, you click OK, you will get the table like this. Okay. Alright then, so now how you can construct a bar chart. So what is actually a bar chart? So bar chart is a diagram showed frequency. Here it showed the frequency of the uh, data. The height of each bar indicates the frequency of each category. The bars are the same width and also separated. So how can you get or how can you construct a bar chart using SPSS? You can go to the menu bar and then click graph yeah, and then uh, go to chart builder and you can see many types of chart and graph and you need to click bar. Okay. And from there, when you click OK, you will get this output. So what you can see now is that, like I said, a bar chart is a graph or a, a diagrammatic a diagram or it's a diagram it show the frequency of each of the score for example here from the table of frequency number of students who get 53 is only one 
So from bar chart, it shows that the count or the frequency is only one. So the highest students who get a mathematics score uh, is with a score of 50, 59, where the total number of students who got 59 is 6 students. So this is how we read a bar chart. Next, we have a histogram. So what is a histogram? So histogram shows the frequency of each interval class for continuous variable. I already explained to all of you what is continuous and what is a discontinuous variable last week. So the width of each bar represents the size of class interval. The height represents the frequency of class interval. So the bars have the same width and touch to one another. It's different from the bar chart where the bars are separated from each other. But in histogram, it is attached to each other. So how can you get or how can you build a histogram using SPSS? The same step as like you produce the bar chart using SPSS. You go to graph, select chart builder, and you need to define variable properties. So what is x-axis and what is y-axis? So for that, you need to know what is your variable, which are dependent variable and also the independent variables. So this is an example of a histogram. So you can see clearly now the bar of histogram is attached to one another. It is not separated like the bar, bar chart. But the function is the same to show the frequency, the frequency of the data that you have key in into SPSS. So now let us look at the other type of uh, plot or graph, which is a stem and leaf plot. Yeah. So a stem and leaf plot is a spatial table where each data value is split into a stem. So stem is referring to the first digit or digits and a leaf, usually the last digit. So that's why it is called a stem and leaf plot. So how do we get a stem and leaf plot? You need to go to analyze, choose descriptive statistics and then choose explore. And after that, you'll see this box where you need to key in what is your dependent list or dependent variable as well as what is your uh, uh, independent variable. So in SPSS, we don't have independent variable, but it is labeled as factor list. So there, you need to go to plot. Yeah, you need to go to plot. You choose plot and you will choose the stem and leaf plot and also histogram under the descriptive and then you just click continue so i'm going to repeat again first you go to analyze okay you go to analyze choose descriptive statistic choose explore and under the box of explore go to plot and then choose stem and leaf and also histogram but don't forget to list or to um to let sps know what is your independent variable as well as dependent variable and then you just click continue so what is actually or how can we read a stem and leaf plot? Like I said, like I said, um, stem is it contain the digits, yeah, right? Like I said here, okay, stem the first digit or digits, and a leaf usually the last digit, okay. So if you look at this example by using um, the sample of mathematics score, the lower score is fifty three. So the digit five is the first digit; it belongs to stem. And three is the second digit, it belongs to leaf. Okay, so uh, how about 58? Yeah, 58. So five is stem and eight is leaf. So how many students got 58? Two, you need to count. There are two students who got 58. And how many students got 59? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six students got 59. So six plus two make the frequency is eight. So the range between 58 to 59 for the student to get the scores is 8 students. So that is how we read a stem and leaf plot. Right, how about 64? There are 3 students who got 64. Okay, so this is how we read the stem and leaf plot. And from this stem and leaf plot, we can see that the, the graph or the diagram of the stem and leaf show normal because the data is having a bell-shaped curve. So next, let's look at the box plot. What is a box plot? So a box plot is the visual representation of the statistical five-number summary of a given data set. 
So what is a five number summary? So a five number summary includes the minimum number, first quartile, median or second quartile, the third quartile and also the maximum value. So how do we get a box plot? Okay, you go to analyze, choose descriptive statistics and again you choose explore. And under the dialog of explore, okay, don't forget to key in the dependent list. Okay, and then choose um, plot. Don't forget to click stem and leaf. Okay, and then when you go to statistics, okay, sorry, you go to plot and then you choose stem and leaf plot. And then you just click conti, continue. Just the same step like you choose a stem and leaf plot. But, of course, the interpretation of the SPSS is that first you will see the max score under the descriptive uh, statistics with the mean, yeah, the median, the variance, the standard deviation, the minimum value, the maximum value, the range, the interquartile, the skewness, as well as ketosis, which I will explain in the second second part. But things that you want to explore now is the box plot. So this is a box plot, example of a box plot where it contains the five value, which is the minimum value, the first quartile, the second quartile, the third quartile, and the maximum value as well. You can also determine the outliers as well as the extreme outliers. So from the sample of box plot, the minimum value is 53, the first quartile is 58, Second quartile is perhaps 63, the third quartile would be 65, and the maximum value would be 70. So the outliers, we have uh, respondent number 19, number 30, and number 7. We have three outliers, and extreme outliers refer to respondent number 13. So there's difference between outlier and also extreme outliers. Okay, so again... Now, how you can get the descriptive statistic? You go to descriptive statistic, choose frequency. You can choose quartile, mean, median, standard deviation, variance, minimum, maximum, skewness, and keto, ketosis. And it will come out with this, um, sorry, and you will get this uh, box or interpretation. Right. So this is the table of frequencies where it contain all the mean, median, standard deviation, variance, skewness, and all of the things that you have key in under frequency or statistic frequency. Yeah, so you get this, this uh, interpretation or this output. Right, so what would be, like I said, yeah, from the sample of box plot, minimum value is 53, first quartile is 59, median is 62.5, third quartile is 65, and maximum is 80, 88. Right? So this would be the another example of a box plot. Okay, we have the minimum value, first quartile, median, the third quartile, the maximum value, and also either outlier and also extreme outlier. So it has five values under the box, box plot. Right, so I hope you can, you are able to understand and you can interpret the box plot. Okay, right, and this is the things that I already explained just now. The minimum value is 53, and then this is the first quartile, yeah, the second quartile, the third quartile, the maximum value, the outliers, which is uh, ID number seven or respondent number seven. 19 and 30, and extreme outliers is the 13, yeah? Alright, minimum, first quartile, second quartile, third quartile, maximum value, this is the outliers, and the one with the asterisk is the extreme outliers or the extreme values. So I hope that uh, you can uh, understand how we can create a graph and charts using SPSS and how to interpret it. Thank you very much, guys. All the best.